show you mm, different example demo AUT on test ng framework so demo AUT is a site Not demo key, demo need. So this has a flight reservation application with the registration and flights, and uh, uh, we can can do a little bit of validation inside. And this will be full and final uh, that will apply all the features of the framework. That is, hybrid. Hybrid framework which consists of keyword. Reusability infra okay. infrastructure. Modularize utility driven and data driven. With So test in, I'll explain test in before. Just like uh, regular class, we have the same logic, no change, but this is similar to JUnit, but test in is mostly used in testing. And in test in we have, like I said, annotations, add the red test, and followed by the function. Okay, so this will be the main test that will act as the public static void main in the regular conventional Java class. And whatever I put under before test, so that will be uh, triggered before the test. So before test will be triggered first. <clears throat> Just uh, uh, whatever I want to relaunch browser or uh, load something that I want to load before the test, I will put it inside this. So I can call this as prerequisite just for the namesake. And after test annotation will, whatever function is underneath it, it will be triggered after the test. So this will be the final. You can call for the timing, you can say it final. And finally, I want to just close the browser. So I'll call it post requisite and call the setup function that will close the browser or quit the browser. And all of the logic that will be according to the test case will be put inside the test. So you can call it test demo AT. So since I'm already using test in the class name, so function name will be starting with test and followed by the test case name. Okay, so just show you a little bit of a test ng before there are more, many more annotations, not just this. So I'll give you a brief info about that. So for that, I have created another thing called playground just to play. 
okay so these are just small small classes just to show you what is what so i'll create test ng class here okay instead of regular class normally we'll call this one i'll create test ng class okay so let's call this test ng for demo Oh, this is actually a folder class name will be here. Browse. Simply grounds. Okay, so these are all the annotations available. So at the retest is not available because it's by default. It will be there. So it's mandatory. These are optional. Before at the rate before method will be called before method particular method and before class the starting the class so this will be before class and before test just before the test before suite before the suite uh, which contains a, a certain number of tests and similarly these are counterparts of after so after method after class after test after suite will be launched or triggered appropriately okay if you're using any data then the data provider otherwise it's not required so we are using our own data uh, data pool reader so i'll explain that later then you can finish okay so it automatically added test so because test is the main and this is a function name which takes n and s so data provider is data pool okay for the time being but we can add data pool the test ng also takes care of okay so just to see what is triggered when uh, what is hierarchy or what is order of their uh, uh, questions calling i'll just put the simple sys out okay so instead of this out what I'll do, I have the log details. So we will use log details. So log details dot log. You can use log for J also. That is at once. So what is the function in log details log okay and whenever we use test ng it automatically imports all the test ng uh, related packages so these are the test ng okay so just to give you a brief how about how to insert or install the test ng initially you have to do if you are not installed already go to help and click install new software so there, there is two ways you can install test engine one is through jar one is through installation or one is through marketplace three ways actually so go to this site beust eclipse and just make a note of ng so what you have to do is go to clips help install new software okay then enter this URL and just select this and follow the instructions that's it next 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 since i have already uh, installed this so i don't need to again then it will add this so how do you make sure whether the test engine is inserted or installed right click on the project 
and see this test ng must be there okay you can also create new test ng class or convert existing to test ng right from here one is that uh, the other is adding the jar to build path that is the other way so that already you know okay good properties It. But 1.8 is a little solution, so use that. And it is already added in the library. So test ng is also added. So you can do this way or that way, so it is convenient for you. Right, so then it will automatically import from this. Then you'll be able to use the test ng framework with all these annotations. Okay, now we are seeing just adding log, which is system dot out dot println to see which one is invoked first, just to give you the demo. So I'll call this test. Okay, just the annotation name so that we know. And before method, right before me. Okay, I'll call by the annotation name itself so it will know inside. So it will print to the console. After method. And data provider we don't have right now. So if if I need to use data pool like data provider right from here, I can use it. So these are the test cases. New object one, like just like collections. I'm using array, two-dimensional array. So I can add like data one and A and B if I want to. Not B. Let's say A1, A2. So this just to uh, replace the actual external data pool. So you can put all the data inside it, whatever is data required for the test case. And you can call right from here. So we, how do you call? Just passing the appropriate index 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, right? So this is 0, 0, 0, 1, the index. So these are just dummy values. I can actually enter. OK, so it is complaining about the package declaration. So just add the package because we have not added add package declaration. And it will do so package. OK, so coming to data provider. So I can actually add, instead of this, this is the test case number, let's say. And I am putting some data, like first name, last name, let's say. Uh, let's use John. First name. Let's say this is the last name, second and third one. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 is. Uh, let's use age. OK, as a string, not as an integer. And I can use the same thing here for the second test case. I can use of if you want to add new test case, same thing. Okay, separated by comma, and finally it is closed. So you can declare it as a collection or object, doesn't matter, or string. Finally, if it is an object, we should actually convert the object to string later. Okay. If it is a string, everything is a string. But object is topmost, it's very generic. So let's use object only. Okay. 
then you can easily convert objectives. Um, you know, object for test case. should not have come on it. Okay, so it is ending. So comma comma then close it bracket and close this. So this is a whole object of uh, two dimensional array type and I, there is no maximum limit. So you can enter any number of test cases like this. Okay, now we are actually putting some sys out just to see which annotation is invoked when what the order. So. Before class, after class, after class, and before test. After test, so after test is after test that we have been using. So this is the most widely used. Then before suite, suite is collection of test cases. And after suite is after the collection of test cases, if you have multiple test cases, like regression tests, but we can use different approach. This is just to give you demo on test engine. Okay, so now we will run this. How do we run? So it's not a regular test. So it's a test engine test. You have to run it as a test engine. So right click on it. Or if you are invoking, it will run from that particular. OK, so run as test engine test. Okay, let it run and see. And the console uh, will have all these sysouts. OK, but uh, we can also check results in separate window. Test engine has. Uh, uh, different mechanism for providing test results if it is a text only. Okay, so it ran so automatically. See, in console also we have all this. Don't worry about the exception, but that is failed because of the this thing. I deliberately put the DB data provider is. So we are interested. This is the test ng logs. This is how we look, and it shows how many failed, how many passed, how many skipped. Okay. So, but it's not very useful. Uh, it's only useful for APA testing because it only contains textual reports. So we can also take a look at console and test ng reports. You can find it in uh, the location somewhere. So you can find it in like this test output folder and you can open index.html wherever it is. Then it will also show the same thing. So just for your information, you can see it in the Explorer, Windows Explorer. Okay, it will show like this. And uh, coming back to this, let's we are interested in seeing when it is When it is invoked, okay. So first, first, first thing is before suite. That is what is invoked. All right. Before test, before suite. Before suite is the first and foremost. So I'll just rearrange them so that you know exactly. 
before sweet. This is the topmost, right? Because the sweet is the first one. Put it in the beginning. Okay, so here what I'll do is I will comment this data provider because we are not actually running this test and comment this data provider. I'll put it on the top again so that you know exact order of location. Somewhere here. Okay. Now, before sweet, then before test, right? So before test, da, 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 da. before test. And then before class. Then after class. After class. What after the test? So you have to put after the test. Where is the test annotation? Yeah, test annotation is right here actually. So before class and after class here, test annotation is commented. So I'll remove this. Okay, so in between right here. Okay, since we are not using data provider DP, so it will not use it. Then after class, then after test. So since you see of before method and after method is not invoked because we haven't actually called there is no method okay before method after method so these are just not called only the call they will be called okay now let's rerun this again so this is for your reference I arrange them in the same order first invoked is before suite and then before test then before class then test after class after test Oh, sorry, after uh, which is on after class and after it is CIM. Yeah, yeah. okay, you can play with this later. Uh, it. Okay, so the invocation happened in the same order as before. Okay, so we are applying the same test ng uh, structure in say test ng framework in our demo ET. <coughs> okay, so we only need two annotations before test and after test. Then test will be definitely there. So in the before test, what I'm doing is I'm calling the setup dot launch. So setup dot launch simply invokes the browser based on the browser type and then gets the URL and waits for some time and then maximizes it. That's all. Okay, so then main test, like I said, after test, simply take down so it doesn't have anything other than the driver dot close. So this is simple. So in the main test, what I'm doing is I am registering. So this approach, this follows the same approach that I explained earlier, but it also uses the data driven approach. So this is the full and final. So first and foremost, what I'm doing is I am registering in the metadata or demo .com. So this has demo register here. Click on this and enter all these details. Okay, so I'll show you. So since we, what is the flow? Actual flow is 
actual flow is first define the x paths of all of this right then call the x paths in the page flows so here page objects first i have collected all the page objects and put it in here so if it is registration it is called registration objects okay <clears throat> and this has all the exports just like before public static final string and type of object underscore object name and equals the export so since it's already captured okay you can try this from the beginning but it is the same approach okay once i collect for all pages after this it will post two or three, these many pages book a flight flight confirmation flight finder logout select flight object then sign in uh, before then uh, sign out also is it then validate total price okay so i would call these in the registration page this is just for storing exports it doesn't do anything so register page is a page flow so first we collected all the page objects and put it in here then page flows page flows and project name and the page name so simply in this case okay i'll explain it a little bit what i'm doing is i am first of all calling the data pool okay so data pool is already created and i put it in a google sheet so i i will share it with you also okay so if you look at <coughs> data pool the first column is a test case id okay which i'm calling demo aet test okay which must match the test name here demo aet test which is in the test type framework folder all right and these this is the header first is a header okay so these are all details i want to enter in the page so which page i want to enter in this page so these are all data and instead of hot coding, we are putting this data, whatever is this, we are going to enter in the data pool, which is Excel spreadsheet, like this, and more. Okay. So first name, last name, first name one, last name one, first name two, last name two, phone number, email address, all these demographic details are entered in the header. So you can add more according to your test case needs. If you have more, uh, like for example, uh, let's say what else we can add. Hobby, let's say. Hmm? You can add this here and add the data. Okay, so that is a header. And this is the actual data that you are going to enter. So I want the automation test to enter the first name Sangam, last name Yo, first name Turam, Yo Yo phone number email address one address address two is option so you can leave it empty and city name state name these are all actually uh, should match the actual application it should accept so state if it doesn't have something like uh, uh, different state which doesn't exist it will it won't enter so you have to enter this is a drop down state drop down so i am entering new york because it is their state okay here but country country is already entered so if you are using the country name and planning to enter different then you should only enter that existing one not the other so this also you can put it under the data pool so if it is text box or drop down you can still put it inside the data pool so this is fillable field like you can enter so i entered this zip code yes username and depart from so this is for the flight reservation so it asks in the next page where do you want to go from and where do you want to uh, arrive 
and what is the date, month, and what are the diff, uh, CC details, and that's it. So I entered all. And you can similarly repeat for different tasks. So it may not necessarily have the same headers. OK, you can change it. Or you can change the tab for different tasks. Case. It's up to you. Since for in the given uh, given the project, you will have similar data for different different test cases. So you can use single single spreadsheet, single workbook, and header one header will be sufficient because we are using different different sites for the different different examples. You can maintain different Excel spreadsheets all together or different pages here, right? Different worksheets. You can add one more worksheet. In. So I'll show you how to read this in the first place and where this is stored in your project. So you can put this Excel spreadsheet. It. Okay, you can download this. I'll share it with you. I think download function should be somewhere. Yeah, share. If I share, you will be able to see. But I have stored this in resources here. Same folder, same uh, file. Resources is a folder. Okay, so I will share it with you. When I share it with you, finally today, you will be able to see. And just adding it to index. So I'll just commit at the very end. So this will be added to. Okay. Now, how do we read this data pool? That's the next question. Correct. So first and foremost, I am storing the data pool path in the constant. So we already know constants should have all the paths. So let me show you. Okay takes the working directory so it doesn't matter where your working directory is get to system dot get property user dot directory will give you the directory so if i'm putting in d drive it will give you d drive <clears throat> so it doesn't matter then in that folder resources folder will have this file so exactly that's where it is in my project workspace in the resources folder i can put the excel spreadsheet so this makes it dynamic so you don't have to worry okay now, this page, this is in the page level, page flow level, remember that. Okay, then I am defining the sheet name. So sheet name is automation. Okay, so if I provide different sheet name for the different desk case, you have to provide that too. So this will read sheet in the given uh, Excel spreadsheet. And header row is zero. So first row is indexed as zero, not one. So I am just letting the util know that header row is zero. This is where the, all the header uh, keys exist. And test case is first one. OK. And I am actually using Excel utils that has get test data XLS method that use that takes data pool path, sheet name, header, and test case name as a parameter. That's it, whatever it is wherever you stored, what is the sheet name, and what is the test case ID, and that's it. It will store the whole row, whole row only, only one row per in this case. And this returns to a hash map. Hash map is written, OK? So I am storing it in a hash map of string string type. So this is a different kind of object data type, OK, hash map. So normally we have seen string integer etc so far so hash map will enable us to store two values at the same time key and value pair okay you can read about this this is similar to uh, map just like mapping hash table hash map. so i am calling this as a row data because this is just one row data you can call it data pool data or whatever okay so excel utils is already created in the utils okay so everything is util based so since i'm uh, i just want to read the excel okay i i created a get data test get test data xls which takes file path and sheet name and header number test case number so what i'm using here is apache poi jar which you need to add it to the jars okay so
so you can download from Apache. Yeah, these are all jars that are required for reading Microsoft documents like Excel or Word. So download all this. You can download from Google. And add it to it. And it has a lot of classes like HSS of Workbook, HSS of Sheet, HSS of Pro. Okay. Uh, these all will read XLS method. So there are also classes called XSS of Sheet, XSS of Workbook, XSS of Pro that will read XLS X files. Okay. So I have created for both, but for the time being, we'll use only the Excel spreadsheet. So this uh, simply to read any file, I have to create a file input stream. I told you whether it is add file or any Microsoft file, then pass the file path and that will be taken. And since workbook is is also part of this, okay. So and I'm passing the workbook name, which is whatever is passed, it will take. And then simply I'm opening the sheet. And after opening the sheet, I want to read the row header, okay, header row, which is also row, and test case row. Okay, so it will combine both. So this is a key value, this is a key, and this is a value, key value, key value, everything is paid. So all I have to do is just iterate it, okay? And whenever I'm using iterator, either in for loop or while loop, I have to use iterator dot has next. So that way it will loop in. And I'll capture all those values, key and value pair. And finally, wherever I opened, I just had to close workbook and file, then simply return the raw data, okay? So raw data is nothing but I'm putting into the hash map so you can put in the hash map or get from hash map. So I am putting all these values, key and value pair, like first name comma, sangam, last name comma, you like this, and returning this. So this will have all the key and value pair combinations. And when, whenever I want to get from this, I'll just call raw data dot get and pass first name one, it will return me sangam. So it will be very easier. So this line will take it up, whole data pool reading. Okay, so I'm declaring some variables according to test case. Okay, and first and foremost, I have to click link. Okay, similarly, I'm showing from the uh, uh, regular order, I mean, hybrid approach order, hybrid framework approach order. So let me go back to this. So first and foremost, I'm clicking on this link. And I got the export, register export. And I stored it in registration objects. That should be the naming convention. Objects should exist in page objects. And page flows should exist in page flows. And the class name is also appropriately named. If it is the objects, just call page name followed by objects that way you will know it does contain it does a it, it contains objects or page flows okay so it will be very clear so this link register is its export okay it contains register you can capture this that's you already know and coming back to this okay then op dot click link is a method if i want to click on this right i called it so from the beginning, from the scratch, this is how you design the test case. So op.click link, you already created, captured this export and stored it in registration objects, and you pass this to this, that we click. And then in you, I, it comes to this page, right? So I had to wait for some time, 10, 10 minutes, 10 seconds, okay, max. Then it will load this page. Then finally, what I had to do, I had to enter these details. So First time checking, this is also good. First, this has to be enabled. It might take some time. I'm checking whether this is enabled. So web element is enabled. Okay, this will return me true. It is enabled means it is fillable. Otherwise, I can't type anything, right? So I'm waiting. This is a good practice. Just wait for the first element to be enabled. Then start entering the text. So what is a, what is the method name to enter the text? Set text and set text takes driver and uh, xpath and xpath is stored in here same registration objects and text box underscore file name first name okay so all these xpaths you already 
uh, have captured beforehand so it will be easier for you to define define time you can re simply recall them from there and this also takes the data what you want to enter like um, i want to enter some right now previously what you used to do you used to here so this is called hard coding which is not good so right now what we are doing this is hard coding okay so now what i did was i called it from the data pool right where is the data pool data pool is here okay it will be here okay here so you, when you open locally it will open since i i don't have microsoft i am opening the google sheet so it will it is the same exactly same now i want to call this first name i want to enter this instead of entering like this i want to read from this first name and enter this <clears throat> whatever it is okay so how do i enter i have already the whole data pool and stored everything in the hash map as row data now simply you get from row data so i'll replace this by dynamic data pool value so row data dot so hash map has two functions mainly i mean it has many but mainly what we are using is get to read if you want to write you call put okay so get this one and it takes object key and returns me a string and exactly that's what i want if you want to put you can put somewhere here it will also have put yeah here right here so put takes key and value so i want to write first name as so and so then you can write so so either way so now right now we are interested in get only and call this and it's asking you to enter the key name and what is a key name key name is first name one exactly including case and state so simply enter first name one okay so why we are doing this we want to enter the data enter the data in where in the application okay now i can directly enter the data over here but that is not the good approach okay it's not it doesn't satisfy the data driven concept so we are entering from data pool and this is the whole line that satisfies all the framework needs so similarly we will automate the rest of the operations so this is same repetition set text now i want to enter last name so i call the set text method and pass driver and the xpath object and data from data pool xpath is coming from page objects page objects right here and data is coming from data pool so repeat this for all and similarly mailing information first time checking this is uh, fillable or not or is displayed this is just to show you different options you don't have to put if condition you can directly fill in and fill all these details and then you have the drop down right country and similarly e selected it, you don't have to do that just putting conditional based operation select drop down will select and this also takes same three values driver export and the value so in you can also put this in the data pool also try that see here i'm a hard coding you can also get it from raw data so for this what you have to do this is for your homework simple go there and add country if it's not already added city state so country is not added so you just add this extra column country and what you do is instead of few years you just call raw data dot get and pass this value here so that will be your homework okay then i would enter username password and all this and finally click link okay now before click submit <clears throat> what i have to do because i need to take screenshot and report this and put it in the final report that's a good idea so before clicking submit because once you click submit it will go to the next page i cannot take screenshot so you have filled all these details let's say now 
now I want to take screenshot. So <clears throat> I have created uh, another method for taking screenshots and reporting. So I'll show you report. Utils has that report result. So okay. this will simply take what you want to do, whether you want to report it as pass, fail, or done. Since we are not validating anything, I'll simply call it done. So there are three reporting uh, parameters I have created. Just like in QTP, you have mic, done, mic, pass, mic, fail. So it's pass, fail, done. And the page name, which is registration. And you can print the comment, registration is successful. That's all. So what it would do, I'll explain. So this is the report utility also, which is a part of our framework. OK. So reporting, we, like I said, I need to add verdict, pass or fail or done. Actually, done is also there. And header, whatever you want to print in the final report. And report comment. OK. So, OK, since I change it, I have to change it every day. OK. OK, so if it is pass, I'll explain. Simply enter the this thing into console, pass so and so step past, or so and so header and report comment. All this entered as a parameter, header and report comment. And do, I'm doing two things. One is writing it a property file. So for writing property file, property utils will take care of property utils dot property file underscore write. And this will take wherever the file is located and captions properties. So I'll show you exactly where it is going to write. Okay, this is a file. I'm storing all the reports and screenshots in here. You can put it anywhere. This is I preset Selenium logs in the source screenshots. So captions. Let's open this with the notepad. Okay, property files you can open with a notepad or notepad plus plus. Okay. So today we have just uh, yesterday we have uh, and last day I run so it will enter the date so if I run today it will enter the date and I am just adding this caption so caption one is your username is so and so let's say it will add sequentially caption one two three four five six seven eight because I can enter these captions followed by screenshots in the final report which will look nice and screenshot will be taken like this screenshot one two three when we run, it will replace these old screenshots. So just for the time being, I will show you the previous runs report. Oh, did it open? No. Let's open in the paint. OK, so it will take the screenshot like this and store. OK, like this, all the screenshots. Okay, so here, first thing is I need to, I am, what I'm doing is I'm type uh, printing this to console, which is just for our understanding, for debugging purpose only. But for reporting purpose, I have to write it to the property file. So property file, just like I, I have created property file and for read, I have created property file and for write, which will write to the property file which is this captions dot properties so screenshot folder path so i'm passing in the constants that is set to same path c7 lock screenshots c7 lock screenshots so you can set it to anywhere all you need to change is the path here okay now going back report utils okay so in this case what i'm doing caption and Report comment. So it will property file here two things key and value pair again. So this is a key, this is a value. That's what I've done. And then I have to take the screenshot also, which is like this. Every page, wherever I call this function, it will take the screenshot and store here in the same location. So this is a location, same location as this. And counter. So I'm simply put adding counter here. Screenshot is already preset. And first screenshot will be named as 000, then 001. So like this, it will increment on orderly. So simply, I'm calling the screenshot method, which actually uses 
robo okay so it as as we take screenshot on keyboard by pressing it will do the same thing robot key robot is useful for this <clears throat> okay so toolkit uh, is a class and dimension rectangle so i want to take use toolkit and i want to set the dimension for screenshot so you can take it in rectangular mode or full screen so that you can pass so i want to take in rectangular mode i'm calling that and initializing the robot class and setting the counter initialize with the zero 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 and converting the string and I, since just like any file i have to create buffered image since it's image i have to uh, instantiate the buffered image and robot has create screen capture method already built in so i am simply calling this and passing this screen rectangle okay so you can set the size here screen size and everything so i can set what kind of file it should be dot png or dot jpeg okay i can pass and this takes where the location is so new file instance and the file instance takes file path and file name right so i am setting it exactly here so i am setting png here okay so if i change it to dot jpeg it will store it dot jpeg but they recommend using the either of this you can also have said bmp it doesn't matter let's use jpg just for the information the png will occupy less space so let's use jpg also or you can pass it as an argument also okay so i can overload this function and pass it whichever i want to and finally write this image i will okay and then it will be taken a screenshot and stored in this location wherever you screenshot is captured and at this location it's stored as this it will print simply okay so that function screenshot function i am calling in where in the report details here report screenshot details i what i called it but screenshot details, I'm not calling it separately. It's part of report details. So report details will take care of everything. So if it is pass, I am printing pass. Similarly, if it is fail, I can print fail. This is based on conditional if your validation fails. And if it is simply done, just like this, it's not validating anything. I just filled out the form, then I can call done. So this will simply take the screenshot and do this nothing is there you have to enter something pass fail or done so default is a switch case okay so here i'll go back and this is where i called so always do the operation just before hitting the submit just before it goes next page just call the report it is and pass appropriate and it's done class page name and comment then i am clicking the link submit button then it will go to the next page then uh, always add some uh, weight at the end because after clicking this button it takes some time right navigating to next page always so it's like uh, better idea to add this so i just put two implicit weights just for your information but you don't you don't need to just you can add one of these okay so in the next page it will show some your username is so and so whatever username i enter if i enter username to it will display this so then we can validate in the next page so i will show you until this and we'll see so in order to stop the execution what i'll do is i'll add the debug point here okay because i want to pause it there so this just double click okay right here somewhere here okay this is a breakpoint so it will execute till here and stop so that we can watch okay so now i will run this test case modulus framework and hybrid framework this is the one So right click, instead of run as, if I am debugging, I have to debug as, debug as, okay. So now let it run, or you can also invoke it from here, this doesn't matter. Yeah. 
now it is launching and it will stop at the same point where we want it to stop Okay, so it stopped right here. So it automatically opens a debug launch, debug mode. So this is exactly where it stopped inside this page, right? Right here. Okay, now what I want to do is in the next page, there's an next page and it must have stored the new screenshot right here. Okay, which is on today's date, see? But when I run code totally, it will re overwrite this. So this is the new screenshot with this current it automatically it's true. Okay. Now in the next page, before signing in, what I want to do is I want to validate this. Whatever the username I entered in the previous page, same thing is displayed. Okay. So that's a validation point. Now my expected note is this. Okay. You can hard code this, but you can parameterize this if you want to parameter is this just add split here plus and then whatever username from the data pool okay this is my expected note now actual note is whatever is displayed here so that I have to capture using the get text method exactly so op dot get text method will give you the exact text so I am passing text note again this is the export which is stored in the page object similarly no change and actual username so i just am interested in this one not the whole thing so i need to capture the substring okay so whole text will be returned in the actual node out of this i want to capture this one so i created substring which actually takes starting position and ending position and return only that part so substring is just like nothing but using string dot substring it's already built in i put it in the reuse uh, custom method user defined method takes beginning index and ending index and only returns me part of it okay coming back to this so if i look at this it is a static string it is not changing anything and it is if you can count this one two three four five including spaces the starting position of u is 24 and ending position is somewhere here so i can make it dynamic also i can let it go all the way till end but avoid the last dot so that is a little bit more but you can put the index of last position or if you don't enter anything 33 it will go till last and you have to get rid of this dot okay so just to avoid that complexity i am putting starting and ending position Okay, so these string utils as part of Java, you can play with that. And actual notice, whatever this is, and expected notice, this one. Okay, so I can compare actual note and expected note, or actual username and expected username, and note validation. Okay, so simply I'm comparing expected note dot equals actual note, then return me true, otherwise false. So if it is true, then report as pass based on conditional okay and take screenshot 
else report it as fail. So that automatically it will report pass or fail if it is so and so. Or I can do it a little bit differently also, which is compare method. We have already done that, right? I've already used this, right? So if I use this, it will also report. I mean, take screenshot and report to the captions. So I have overloaded some functions. And this also does the same thing. You pass the expected value, expected note, and actual note here. Okay. So I'm just putting comment because if I add this, it will be duplicate validation. Okay. So appropriately I'm putting validation, nothing is in, in this page, just validation. And after this, that's it. That's the whole registration page. I include the validation in the registration page itself. Okay, now we will just continue. In order to continue, you can press this or if you want to go step by step, you can step over or step into. These are the debug uh, techniques. Okay, simply I want to go till here, but I want to stop somewhere. So what I'll do is I'll go to the main test case and put one more debug point here. Okay, so then I'll continue like this. Okay, now it must have run. Okay, and it displayed user in to is matching. Okay, there is no valid, there is no navigation in here. It just captured the text and validated it and it reported the same thing and screenshot is also captured. Yeah, so today's date, second screenshot captured. These will be replaced later, finally. Okay, so then we will go till here. It stopped right here because I put one more debug point. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll stop it here and explain and we'll run it again from the beginning so that it will be better because in the debug mode, windows are very small. We cannot code or explain in this. So Java mode is better for this. Okay. Okay, so in this case, what we're doing one more is reusability, infrastructure level, data driven and Report driven. Reporting is very important, so it should be included too in the hybrid framework. That is the overall. Okay, so let's come back to the test case. After registration, okay, so what it will do is it will go to flights. Okay, then add the flight information, book the flights. Okay, exactly. This is what we want to um, uh, automate here. So, <clears throat> first of all, all the exports are stored in flight page, page objects. Okay, first let me remove that debug point in the previous page. Okay, so we are in the flights page now. Flights page. So for flights page, page objects, flights, find out objects. Here, yeah, this is the one. Okay, all the objects are stored. You have to capture these manually from the DOM. From here, right click and inspect and open the DOM and capture. So this is already, you, you can do it on your own without looking at this, okay? That, right. This is a time taking process, okay? So you already know how to do this. I explained it already two, three times. And after doing this, you come to 
page flows. So page flows as flights page. Come here and let's define this same way. Okay. So again, I'm calling the data pool here. Okay. I can put the data pool in topmost class, but for the beginning, uh, for the learning purpose, I'm putting in every uh, page level class here. Calling this Excel utils, which will store all the data and gives me hash map so that I can enter because page level also I have to enter all this. This is where all the fillable fields are there. So I need the data pool values here. So I am calling this here. And then first and foremost, I click the link link flights, which I have already done. This will click link and it simply takes export of that link. Then wait for some time and conditionally Okay, I'm waiting for the radio button is selected round trip. So I'm checking the best way is to check for the first object, whether it is loaded or selected or visible. So simply I'm checking. That means it's a second waiting. It's another kind of waiting so that you make sure all the page is loaded. So I'm waiting until radio button flights type A is selected. Okay, and the radio buttons, the export is already stored in this objects, flight finder objects or flight objects and then click on the radio button so i want to select round trip so i clicked on it it's already default selected so i don't have to and then enter this drop down values so op dot select drop down will let you do that pause the export and get the data from row data dot get number of passengers so number of passengers is one two three four accordingly it will enter Okay, so the data is coming from data pool. So let me show you again. Okay, number of passengers, it will read to, <coughs> so by default, by default it is one, there it is one. Here it is one, so it will enter two. So it will change the value. Okay, now let's keep it here. And similarly, depart from depart month, depart date, arriving in all the dates and details will be called from here. Okay, depart from depart month, depart day, arriving in, and enter in the appropriate places here. These are all drop downs. So you have to exactly enter the value that is inside the drop down. Arriving in and returning on. So automating this and click the radio button for preferences. So I put exactly what section of the page you are entering as a comment so that it will be clear for whoever is reading or who is writing or modifying or evaluating or reviewing okay preferences section here so i am entering the class radio button so again radio button six path and that's it x path is that's all needed so first it will enter first class by default economy is there it will simply set it first class and then like i said before hitting the next button or submit button or whatever just take the screenshot of this page if it is important because here I'm not doing anything. I'll just call done. Report it will start report it will result done. And the page name flight pointer. This is for the display purpose only. Okay. And then you can add some comment. Flight finder is successful. Just to let others know that it's successfully filled. And then click the button continue. So click link button continue. Okay, so after this we will run at the very end. So I'll and walk you through the other pages after this there is no validation required here so you can just continue as usual after the flights page then select flight page will be displayed so let me go to that page manually okay here you will be able to select appropriate flight based on this price according to your budget and needs all right so simply you select depart flight and return flight and continue. 
so that's exactly done here depart flight return flight and continue i created two sub three separate methods in the same class select flight depart return page i call select flight depart return page yeah so if you want to call just select flight page will be sufficient okay so in case you want to do that i'll simply modify its name refactor and rename so let's remove this h h that's all is required right so it will change the class name also immediately the refactor will do all changes updates now it is checking for wherever this is called so that it can change everywhere okay so it changed right here okay so in this case depart flight so all i'm doing is just clicking on the radio button depart flight that's all wherever i want to click okay so i'm selecting the depart united deadlines uh, which is this or unified deadline united or unified and blue skies for the return ticket blue skies probably this one or this one okay you can rename it accordingly so the naming convention may be different and continue flight so before that i have to report details right so i am including in the same function so report details as done for the select flight it will simply take screenshot then continue click link button continue so that's here it is not changed but okay it is changed but you have to import it control shift to o let's see what went wrong here imports yeah it's already there but let's just open again okay just open or clean clean will actually remove the errors so sometimes it will automatically resolve the errors so what you have to do is just go to project and clean okay select the project name and automatically it will resolve so otherwise close and open that's another idea then i am calling the three <coughs> three functions from this depart select and return depart return and continue okay then it will go to the if i do continue hello book a flight okay yeah yeah tell me your question okay who is speaking any doubts okay so next thing is booking flight by entering your details for passengers or passenger okay so this is where we have to validate a little bit what is the price of each flight to and flow okay and plus this plus this multiplied by number of passengers plus tax will give you the total price so we need to validate here so a little bit of validation is required so let's see about that so book a flight valid price page i'm calling it okay and valid price is the first and foremost thing okay so valid price needs a little bit of get functions so get text get text so let's look at that First, I need to capture all the text. So exactly, I'm doing get text of depot flight price. Where is this? Yeah. I need to capture this. You know, to validate, first I need to capture this depot flight price. Okay. So I pass export of this simply, and pass this to get text. Simple. The function automatically captures the text and store it in a string variable. 
the got flight price. Similarly, I need return flight price. So this is a table, hidden table, and I pass appropriate XPath. So let's have a look at the XPath also. And XPath is totally different. I, you already you should be able to capture the XPath by now. Okay, so try that more. So it's a table. I am passing table, table body, table row, and table data, and the number of table data. I already showed it to you. So you try it on your own again, looking at this. Do not look at this and try it on your own, compare it with it. Okay. Now going back. Similarly, I capture number of passengers too from here for validation. Get text, number of passengers, it will store in here. Same thing for tag and same thing for total price. So I captured one, two, three, four, five values here. Okay, now in order to validate anything, I need to add or subtract. So I need this integer values of this. And I don't want this signs extra special character. So I had to do a little bit of <clears throat> work here. So in order to convert from string to integer, I can use integer dot parsent. Integer is a class which has method parsent. This will convert string type integer into actual integer. Okay. So that will give me 281 number instead of 281 string. So similarly, I convert the written price and number of passengers too. Okay. Here I had to get rid of some special characters for these two. So what I'm doing is taking the substring. So substring starting home first character will do because first character is this sign so I can get rid of this and whatever is the rest of it is number so substring is uh, having overload function I told you for that takes beginning character or beginning and end character so just beginning index is one and it will go till the rest till the end so first is zero okay and starts from one which is nine and go till end which is 91 so that will be stored in total price same thing for this also same thing for this so one and go till end so i want 119 in total price so i got all the values in integer mode exactly now i can simply calculate so okay what is the calculation the full price is this and this and if this total depart price plus return flight price multiplied by number of passengers plus tax should be equal to total price equals equals is for the integer values or numbers okay otherwise first strings dot equals is a function if both these are equals on the left hand side of equation right hand side of equation are equal equal exactly then i'll report it as a pass okay so it will take the screenshot and pass otherwise fail simply so this is exactly validation done at the time of execution okay after this validation, what I have to do, I have to enter the passengers info. So this is easy, filling all these details. So I am calling the data pool again and set text, calling the set text methods. Set text method and passing the text paths and passing the data from the row data dot get first name one, last name one. Exactly. Wherever we have stored, it will call from there. So we can reuse the same fields. You don't have to enter new fields again whatever we entered during the station first name we can enter or here also first name last name one first name two last name two so since two passengers are traveling so this will fill with first name one last name one first name two last name two same thing and enter the card info so here it will be entered we'll select all this and all the data is coming from here only all the card info is here and it will enter here same thing just similar thing that's why i'm going very uh, repeatedly so then before entering before clicking the next button or whatever button that submits this page you take the screenshot and done you can say done because there is no validation here there is a validation here which is already done right the validation is already done book flight validation so i can take screenshot here and then click submit so we'll click on this page so after this this will go to 
active flight. So let's go to the main test case again. Okay, so this book of flight is done. Then flight confirmation validation page is the next one. Flight confirmation validation page. So let me just fill this with my values. There is no validation here, so you can enter dummy values. It doesn't matter. Okay, now flight confirmation page is the last page, and it says confirmation successfully your itinerary has been booked, and it will display the same details that we have validated before. So you can also put revalidation here just to check whether this correct values are displayed or not. Okay, and here also, whatever is in the display, so that I can do it in the flight confirmation validation page dot validate flight confirmation. Okay, so flight confirmation. So let's see if we can, these two names you can match exactly flight finder objects, flights page, flight finder. <clears throat> so the previous page was flight finder or flights. So the this page is flights, flight confirmation. So flight confirmation, flight confirmation. So let's make it equal. The only thing that differs from these two is it says objects and that says page. So you cannot obviously differentiate between two. So let me refactor. So rename will not do. So always refactor. Okay, so let's try to rename and see. Probably it will refactor. So validation is not required inside because it's already done. Okay, so it won't do. So that's why you have to refactor. So rename type to flight confirmations page. Okay, now it is renamed. And flights page, flight finder objects. So flights page, probably flight finder. Right, let's rename it to flight finder. So this way you can easily identify which page objects is referring to which page flows. So just the naming will have objects as suffix here and page as suffix here. So that's why I'm renaming everything or refactoring flight finder. Okay, all you need to change is a type here. Compilation unit is this, type is this. This itself is the type. So flight finder. And save all. Okay, so now coming back to this. And just change it here because we haven't refactored it will see it will show you a little bit of suggestions so go with this it's con flight confirmation page right so you can choose this and one more flights page it should be flight finder page so just hover over it and select the appropriate and change to flights find flight finder page and same here. And import, so you can do it by control shift go automatically to fix. Yeah, so that fixed it. Okay. Now let's go back to the test, the main test, and flight confirmation page, like I told you, validates the flight confirmation again. Same thing I am doing getting each text this is a little bit of work because this is the whole object that returns so i'm getting uh, capturing everything from this one just i'm interested in this one so these are all string ma string manipulation string um, string validations so first i'm capturing all one two three four four five okay depart flight price return flight price number of passengers tags and total price and displaying it here, we can see in the console. 
and then finally i have to convert them to integers okay capture exactly those that are required so i am capturing exactly like this for example i want depart flight price okay this one 281 so what i'm doing is i am looking for the first index of dollar so because this can subject to change so this can be dynamic if i select different flight it will be different and it will give a different number of number of characters so i cannot rely upon one two three four five right so i had to use a different technique so i look for the first instance of this symbol and wherever this is occurring just start from the next okay so that's exactly what i'm doing the string dot index of will give me index of this plus one will give me the position of this okay so then i'll print out this to check whether the, that's a correct value written and similarly i want the last index so last index is what last index is the space here okay before each so i want exactly these three out of this whole table data okay so i use this first index of and last index of technique and then simply call the substring where i am passing Depart beginning index is this and depart ending index is this. So I stored it in depart beginning index and depart ending index. Okay. So similar technique is adopted for return flight price, but in a little bit different way. I'm using the regular expression. Okay. So just to give you the heads up on regular expression, what is a regular expression? Regular expression is actually to generalize some string. Okay. If I want to generalize a single alphabet, okay, I can call it A to Z or A to Z, okay. Single alphabet in lowercase, A to Z. This is the regular expression for this. Single alphabet, single alphabet, only one alphabet, capital letter is this. So example will be like P, okay. So for P, I can write like regular expression like this. For capital, let's say Q. Okay, this would be for any single digit number zero to nine or backslash D. Example would be like anything seven. Single alpha numeric character. So it can be alphabet or numeric. So A to Z, A to Z, zero to nine. So this can be anything like this. Either I can go for one or A or all these are valid. These regular expression satisfies all this. Any number of digits, one or many occurrences. So I don't know how many. So I can put plus sign. So this will be any number of digits. So example would be one or two, three or any number. Okay. So if I just need to cover zero also, that means no number. Okay. So then I put star sign and any numbers doesn't matter and if i want to indicate starting position in regular expression caret sign ending position dollar and exactly n number of n number of digits then i can put in flower brackets so and so number so example would be so for example i want to write regular expression for uh, let's say for example zero to nine and exactly five instances so the example should have one two three four five okay so if you enter six the regular expression is invalid so you have to change it to six then okay and if you want to cover special characters like any of these you have to put in the brackets square brackets like if i want to cover at the rate okay so this will be regular expression for this one. so whatever is it just put in the this one so examples I gave you, and uh, you can read about this a lot on the net. So all we are doing is uh, using it little bit in our automation. So this will be, uh, this will suffice. So for example, I want to write a regular experiment for automation. It would be this, because it has capital letter and small letters and any number. So small letter is called by this capital is a to z is called by this and any number star alpha numeric characters okay so 
how do you write a regular expression for this this is a string and this is a equivalent regular expression a to z and a to z capital and 0 to 9 also because there are numbers and any number of characters everything included in the square brackets and i want to write a regular expression for this one which also consists of special characters so alphanumeric a to z a to z 0 to 9 and then special characters whatever i used underscore percentage at the rate okay percentage at the rate and any number okay some good examples would be write a regular experiment for this date mmddy okay it's a little more complex okay than the previous one it's not straightforward so first i have to find okay first letter would be zero to nine okay zero to nine two times but this not the case because you can also have 12 so i give elaborated expression on here so i split this into again two characters zero to one okay first uh, digit and then zero to nine is the second digit so given any month it will always be true first digit will be zero or one second digit will be zero to nine any range okay then followed by you can use backslash forward slash then the date first digit will be zero to three because date will have zero one or one one or three zero okay so i am splitting segregating and the last digit will be any digit from zero to nine and then separator and then it's two to if you want to start from 2000 that's fine or you can also start from zero to nine also okay so this will be better 20 and this can be any digit. Similarly, you can write a regular experiment for email. So that will have something and at the rate something dot the domain dot net or dot com. So you can cover all of this in this one. And uh, this is what we covered in the first batch. So write a regular expression for this one. So you can try for that. And you can look at these sites for reading and practicing also oh, for regular expressions i'll just show you quickly and move on okay so i can also take care of writing regular expression from the java so i can use this function i'll share these notes with you and we will use this in the current demo ET example also okay i'll just show you this okay so if i type a string here like um, okay you can practice writing regular expression for this one it will show match or no match so how do we write it's a combination of alphanumeric a to z right a to z because capital is there and any number of characters so is it right a to z a to z let's see okay a to z a to z yeah what is the mistake because i didn't cover a small z okay now it is match star Okay, it still says not a match. Let's use the other one. Is it working or not? I don't know. Okay, let's try this here. Let's try with the simple. You can try with the simple. So my test string is simple A. Okay. How do I write a regular expression for this one? It's a small alphanumeric character. So A to Z. A to Z. Okay. Now one match. So this is working. You can use this. Bookmark this. Put it somewhere. Okay. Similarly, I can write. The whole thing is covered in this one. Okay. 11 matches. And if I add a single capital letter, 
this is not a match it's not selected only these matches it is showing right now you can add a to z now this is also called some match you can try for these So let me try for one of these automation to the selenium. Write regular expression for this. Okay. Then what is not covered is numbers and special characters. So how do you cover this? Simply add zero to okay. And numbers are covered now, special characters are not covered. See the blue color is covered already. So it's showing only matches. And you can cover those great and so direction for this one. So we can use this in our code. Now, what I'm trying to do is here trying to find the match for this one, whatever matches the the sign followed by number. That would be my price. So return flight price. So exactly. I'm going there and return flight price would be this one so whatever is matched it will capture this and store it in here okay so after storing and converting it into integers just like we did before in the previous page same thing all that differs is here a little bit of extra string manipulation that's all otherwise later it's a similar story then i'm simply comparing if return flight price dot boolean report dot report utils otherwise do this okay or you can also call report utils dot compare. Okay, this will also return boolean similar. Okay, and call pass. Okay, so this is a extra one. I'm displaying, I'm uh, uh, validating whether the return flight is displayed or not. You can add validations like that, you can come up with. Okay, so for this, we don't need to. And finally, we'll keep this as a final. Then converting it to integers because these are all strings and getting rid of these extra signs. And finally, converting it to strings using integer dot percent similar to the previous page nothing new okay then finally calculation here okay so you can add it here calculation you can use this compare expected result will be this and actual result will be this okay and then or i can just put if and else right here so i'm leaving it to you next uh, homework and then take screenshot and everything will be done using the report result so if both are equal expected and actual pass otherwise fail and then finally click logout button that's the final step so let's run this whole thing i created two test cases for the same one is without testing you one is with testing you okay so you can look at both of them without testing is simply straightforward it doesn't have a flights page so oh here we have to change the names right flights finder page and one more here flight confirmation validation page So let's run both of this. Uh, this will also do the same thing. But here I didn't call the uh, user annotation. So this will be straightforward. That's all. Let's convert this to, I mean, use the same thing. But let's segregate this to top position. So we have used the same technique in PHP travels, uh, tools QA test, I guess. Okay, so I just want to use, 
yeah that's fine so you can call everything in here all i want to do is store this url in the constants so that uh, you can call it from there so let's call let's put it in the constants Uh, since any project will have only one base URL, so you don't have to worry about this. But because in here, there are multiple examples I'm taking. So what I'll do is I'll create only for this URL. So let's call this URL underscore demo aid so that you know exactly. Okay, now let's come back to test. All the tests are in hybrid framework, so I segregated all these tests. Just look for them. First, starting with linear framework, two tests, then module rest framework, three tests, and then finally hybrid framework. Okay, so you can practice from linear, then we'll come to module rest a little bit, and finally hybrid. All the Java tutorials are also put in the same test, okay, library and test. So you don't have to look anywhere else. This uh, all in one. Okay, so let's go here. Call this URL from there instead of hard coding. You can also put it in the data pool. So try that and see. It's, everything can be done. Anything is possible. So how do we call constraints from constraints, constraints star URL underscore demo Okay, so let's run this. If you run this, you normally run as Java application. If you run that, we will run both. And after that, if you run that, it will be test engine. Okay, let's close this. Okay, so now we have to look for new screenshots. Okay, all wiped out. So we will check at the very end. So now it's entering register page with all the data from data pool. So this data is coming from Excel spreadsheet. So you can modify Excel spreadsheet data and run it for yourself. Okay, now register, this is where we are validating the username. After that, it will go to flight page and then and to the data from data pool again. And select the flight and then book a flight by entering all these details. And validate in the beginning. The summary will be validated. So it validation is went quick because there is no experts involved. So it will be faster than the navigation. And these details are again coming from data pool. Then finally take screenshot and and this validation again, then book and log out, close the browser. Okay, so that's total time taken is very, very less. Okay. Screenshot is captured. If you look at these logs, everything is exactly what happened during the execution time. First registration. Okay, I put it separately as a banner. You can add banner also. We can enhance. That also comes in the enhancement. Then operations at what point of time, what click link, registration X path, and wait for some time. Then get element, 
so and so x path everything is logged so that you can like take a look if something goes wrong or something goes right too okay okay means something right went wrong right everything is right not okay means wrong so i specifically put these words and set text is the action and on this x path what your setting text from the data pool okay and set text then see done and property is set and screenshot is captured at so and so location okay we'll check the screenshots later after this and get text and actual username actual username so the username is compared with actual and expected and that is also put and property is set for the same thing in the captions and screenshot is captured everything is similar and then flight finder page separated separately and these are the actions we entered all this and again property set screenshot is captured and then depart flight select this radio button select this return flight and select continue screenshot is taken again and valid price so we captured exactly this is where you can see this is a depart price this is the two uh, return price and okay where this is go you can open it from here okay and number of passengers and tax and total price with the dollar sign so finally it is validated pass validation is successful and property is stored and screenshot is stored then last page passengers info is entered and this info is entered card info and final validation also is done exactly you can see what is captured and how we extracted the desired value so this is these are still desired values with extra symbols and final desired values is like this depart price without any sign just number return price total number of passengers tax and total price now we can actually put a calculation here this plus this multiplied by this plus this equals to this simple because these are integers and that is pass and property is set screenshot is taken and finally pass everything is pass okay now screenshot is to take stored at this location right now we will go and check okay all the screenshots are stored okay okay one thing it didn't tell is because we changed the jpeg to png okay so previous jpegs are still intact so current current ones are jpegs previous pngs are still intact you, you can see the date but uh, we can delete everything and next run it will store only those jpegs we can add clean the uh, clean this automatically it will replace because the screenshot will have same extension next time so if you run two times it will replace the older ones because we i change the extension the old ones are intact so just keep the extension same for throughout okay okay so just before this uh, in the test ng class we have run the regular class uh, test java class now we will run the test ng class also okay so here i want to put timing i mean what is the start time and what is the end time what is the duration of execution so that we will also track how much time to so probably it will, it will take one minute or some seconds so before test in the prerequisites i'll put it so that you can i mean in the launch not in the launch okay in the prerequisite separately we'll put it here okay start time start time is uh, how do we calculate using the date details so let's create string start time equals you want to capture the start time whenever it is starting so date utils dot simply i look for the timestamp isn't it timestamp in the let's use this get current timestamp okay in the desired time format or doesn't matter get timestamp we'll look at few examples a uh, few methods and we'll choose appropriately so if it is 
ddm okay this is the format it is returning so you have to be careful and finally i have to let's use the other one okay so this we have to pause the format here let's say dd or mm dd hh m ss okay or uh, you can also add the uh, milliseconds so this will take it of hours minutes seconds okay so similarly we'll log the end time So end time will be after test, after taking down. So let's call this. At that point of time, whatever the current timestamp, it will return this end timestamp. Let's say. Okay. Then what you have to do? You have to subtract, start from the end. That will give you the duration. So let's call that duration. Let's call it test duration. So we have to do clear. Always start with the small letter, the variable, and each new word the capital letter. Date utils. Look at the date utils. It has all the methods. So all you have to do is just utilize. <clears throat> now I find the difference between two. So then I'll just type difference. Okay. Now let's see. <clears throat> Time difference, date difference, uh, get date time difference. Okay, I think this is what we want. <clears throat> Start date time and end date time. <clears throat> okay, now let's look at the insert function. What is the format it is taking? Otherwise, we'll get format error. Okay, so start date time, takes end date time, and format. So format also will be able to control it, so no worries. So whatever format we'll enter, it will, difference between start and time, it will give us exactly minutes, because the execution won't last more than some minutes, so we don't have to worry about days and all those hours. So minutes and seconds, that's perfect. So let's see if this works. Okay, start date time is already we have start start time. And end time and date time format. So I'm entering this format. Okay, start time is not reachable because it is somewhere here. So let's put start time outside as a variable declaration itself. All right. So let's see. If it is, okay, now it is asking me to add those declaration. That is fine. And just throwing. Parse, parse exception because if you don't enter the appropriate format, it might throw parse exception. So it is possible. So we have to throw it in case it occurs. Okay, so let's just check this format is correct or not. MMDDYV, I'm not sure because it's something you don't keep in mind every time. So let me just check. HH. HH. Okay, I have to enter actually mm, not m. So capital mm, this is the actual uh, verbiage for that. So let me go there and enter the appropriate. So this should be mm. Um, 
and where is the start here. Okay, also here you use the URL from the constants. So we will call it from there dot URL demoid. You can also directly enter this in the right here URL setup launch. So just for the convenience, I am separately declaring and initializing. Okay, now let's run this test ng, which also stores the start and date times and times and duration of the time for execution. Okay, now let's run as test ng test. Okay, this, occur this occurs only on my machine, so don't worry, you will not get it. You can change these values in data pool if you want to. And you can try that, yeah, because that's the first thing you can do. Easier to change something, okay. Now, execution is done. Now let's look at the consoles and the screenshots and results one by one. First screenshot, so all the screenshots are brand new just now. It's 11.30, so it probably Complete in one minute. So you can see at the same time. And captions are stored. Let's look at them. Captions is nothing but whatever I'm printing in the system console, I'm storing in captions. Okay. So captions, same thing with the date and time. And caption zero is starting, registration successful, then note matching, expected username, then three flight. In the same order, the counter is increasing the same order. Total price is displayed six, right return price and eight total price. Okay, the ninth is test is successful finally. It is a little bit jumbled, but it is what it is. The property file is not in our control. It will write in this different order. It will write here, but starting from the beginning. But the order of these lines will be jumbled. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, eight. Then nine comes here. So then screenshot so i will just look at the final screenshot okay you can take a look at your own just create this folder in your own or change the path of the file path of the folder in your so that it will store the locations there yeah this is the last let's look at something in the middle okay so this is a book flight screenshot and it shows the timestamp here also if you enable this open this so that everybody can see what time this screenshot was taken right from here okay so they will believe so you can take this screenshot you can you cannot say you run a certain time without showing this so it will be evident clearly okay so screenshot are stored like this captions are stored now finally we will assemble this in a pdf or microsoft word document to share this and email that is a final 
So here, these are the test ng logs. It's similar, no difference. And whatever we have stored, exactly similar. But this time we have added the start time and end time. So let's look at that. Start time is located uh, or logged somewhere here, I guess. If you put the sys out, I don't know if you put the sys out. OK, let's look at the end. Yeah. So it took 1 minute 41 seconds exactly. So that's why the same timestamp was there. 1 minute before reaching the second minute. 1 minute, 2 seconds. And it started at this point of time. <clears throat> 29th December 2018, 11.29, 11 seconds, okay? And same date, ended, ended at 11th hour, which is a local. So for you, it is 12, I guess, for EST. <clears throat> so you check on your machine and 38 second, 52, uh, 38 minute and 50 second, okay? And it will subtract this from this automatically. The utils will do for you, okay? So you can also say, hey, this class, this test case took so <clears throat> less time, so it is faster. So if it is take 10 minutes, it will, it is very, uh, uh, it's not good. So you have to change your coding according to that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, that will be the end of this class. So any questions so far? I'll share this with you guys, but any questions? You can let me know right now. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm sharing this in <clears throat> this one. Uh, what is it called? Uh, GitHub. Okay, so at this location. So go there, create your account, okay? And follow these instructions clearly, I have documented, and download this zip and import in your. If you're good at Git, uh, if you uh, in lab session, uh, you're given instructions to how to use Git, you can follow this Git clone, okay? And followed by wherever I'm storing this code and push because you're not adding anything you can add your homework to your own branch i am adding to the master branch so then you can commit otherwise you can git pull and check the git status from the git bash you have to download the git bash in here from here git downloads if you want to add git to your eclipse follow these instructions then you will get this option if i right click right click and team synchronization here i'll already get i'm already added so i don't need to but you will get git here also by customizing this your uh re preview this is called perspective so you can customize your perspective accordingly and get it so otherwise you will get this git automatically and other way is to um, git eclipse team share project push git so you have to add this and git bash you can download from here if, if you are comfortable download the git desktop which basically doesn't need any commands if you need any help go to these sites which will give you some documentation about git and uh, follow this so i would suggest for the beginners just follow these git configuration create your account go to this and fork it i'll show you exactly what to do So first, let me uh, commit this changes, all right, so that you are aware of. Or I'll commit later, don't worry. So this is the last commit, right? So if I add this, okay. So let's add uh, demo AUT, all right. Demo AUT examples today. Then what I'll do is add the add those files which I want to add. So plus sign will add new files and then go to team and commit. Now I can choose whatever I want to add to the GitHub. 
see all are checked not all are checked some are not checked so whatever is covered so far i'm i'll be adding okay all the page flows for php travel anyway added i just change the name so i'm re-adding them some are deleting if you change the name of the file it will be deleted and new file will be added all right so okay looks like everything is added now now i have to put appropriate comment uh, so what is the comment let's make uh, two separate this thing so first let me add uh, php travels okay if you if you want to add only few whatever just select those php travels okay now i right click on them this is for your own branch i'm saying okay and go to team and go to commit so it will only select those files see it will not select other files so that's one thing now since i can commit all of them so what i'll do is i'll commit all of them right click on the project and commit everything and you can also commit from here right from here add and right from these are the shortcuts okay so i'll just write refactored not refactored added demo aut hybrid let's say hybrid framework example on example let's say demo aut so that's sufficient it will tell everything commit and push you have to commit and push okay so now it's committing changes right here zero percent okay so now this is where you can check so now if you refresh this it will show the current change so you can click on this url will remain the same so you can use this Okay, let's go to my repositories only. And this is the only project. This is a single project, so you don't have to go anywhere. Okay. Okay, so let's see if everything is committed. Okay, it looks like it only shows two days back commit. Okay, let's see what's going on. Probably takes time okay so let's team and commit let's see if all the files are gone or not yeah all the files are gone two days ago okay it didn't commit properly okay so i'll see probably it takes time or i have to redo it okay once i do it i will email you it should actually show the current update it still shows old update okay no worries so what you will do is from your end you follow these instructions and what you have to do is come here and clone or down, download the zip this will download the whole project for you and if you're comfortable with the command prompt okay just copy this okay this will be for the command come here and git clone this your whatever i copy okay this will that will clone into your own okay and you have to add your uh, this thing whatever your 
workspace is your workspace i think just check that okay so then import project ready or eclipse unzip it and uh, this will be downloaded then unzip it import project ready or eclipse you know how to import import is simple right click import okay using that you can import and uh, then you can add your changes to the your own okay you can download github from this one so this is our, what i was searching for so download eclipse i'll show you how to get the Git, github in the eclipse go to help there are multiple ways uh, one is from marketplace one is from install new software so let me show you two ways same way we have added test engine okay so copy this I'm not 100% sure it will come. Let's get up here. So it says pending, probably, yeah. So yeah, this also works. Now you select all of this and go next, 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 and finish, okay? Since I've already added, I don't get to redo it. This is one way, okay? The step is already mentioned here. So you use this URL. Or, or you can also go to marketplace eclipse marketplace this is what we have done before just now eclipse marketplace will also have that i guess so all you have to do is search here the this is this is like a extension or add-on for this find git and search mm, probably yeah there is some github so install it so this may not be the good idea it has a lot of others let's see one more time Okay, so you can know it's already installed. So you can use this one also. Git integration for Eclipse installed. So you can do this or this help install new software or help Eclipse marketplace. Help install new software. Yeah. So this you can do exactly I mentioned or marketplace. Okay. And then you mentioned this URL. Then you can add our new files like this. If you're creating new file, just add it using this plus sign. And then, like I said, commit. And you can customize this perspective and commit is synchronized, commit and commit and push. This is what I did, edit files. So if I edit something here, for example, let's go to the test again. Demo AT test. This is where you put the time. Okay. So now simply I'm adding something like just removing this space, adding the space here. Now it will show star mark here. All right. this is okay because it's we are in the navigator mode we have to switch to package mode so let's go to package mode still shows as synchronized okay so once you add that uh, edit update then you will be able to commit that it will show star mark Somehow it is not showing. Commit and commit push here. So let's say some file is changed. Okay, yeah, okay, it is showing here. It is not showing symbol because it's not refreshing properly. Yeah, so this file, you will be adding commit message and commit. So this will go to your wherever you are 
creating in your own uh, account of github you can push it to your own branch so that's the process okay guys so let me add those later and send you an email and you can practice this let's see if it is still coming or not okay i'll take care of it okay so any questions today's class Okay, no more. I'll end the session today.